So we need to take a brief detour to talk about two different theories of ownership about how you own the oil and gas on your land. I think it's important to understand that as the book describes, there's not a huge difference in practice between these two theories, but they're important to understand both because there's something that people talk about, even if they don't have a lot of practical importance and you want to be able to understand them to talk with an oil and gas attorney. And because as we'll talk about later in the course, there are a couple areas of the law where it does make a difference, which theory of ownership you use. Now, the theory of ownership that's used in Texas is called ownership in place. And that says, you own the oil and gas that is under your land. You have that right to search, develop, and produce, plus a possessory right to the oil and gas in place beneath your track. Now, as we'll discover, that's subject to the rule of capture. So although there's oil and gas under your land, if your neighbor starts producing oil and gas and the oil and gas that was under your land migrates over there, that does not uh, give you a right to recover that oil and gas from your neighbor because of the, royal of, uh, the rule of capture that will belong to them. But the idea is basically you own the oil and gas beneath your track. Now that's followed not just in Texas, but also in Colorado, in New Mexico and North Dakota, which as we talked about New Mexico and North Dakota now are number two and number three producers of oil. Now that creates a mineral estate in land. Uh, and so that's the effect of that ownership in place theory. Now, the other theory of ownership of oil and gas is actually called the non-ownership theory. That is not really a correct term. It's a misnomer, but that's what we call it. And what it means is that instead of owning the oil and gas in place underneath your land, we say that the owner of oil and gas of the oil and gas rights owns the right to search, develop, and produce that oil, but not doesn't have a possessory right to the oil and gas that is in place. That's followed in Oklahoma. As we talked about earlier, Oklahoma is a good state to pay attention to its laws because often there's a contrast with the laws of Texas. The reason that non-ownership is a misnomer is because you still own that right. So it's still a, you still own it. It's still a property right. The idea is you just don't own the oil and gas in place. Now that right is often called a profit or using this French term, a profit, a prond. Um, and, but I, what I really want you to understand is under both theories, your mineral rights are usually property rights. They're not contract rights. So you're going to convey that right. It's not a contract. You're conveying it as you would with any other property.